Before we start to demonstrate either how to take blood or to give an intravenous injection, I thought we might want to go over some of the equipment you'll be using. Commonly, you'll just use a needle and a syringe. Certainly if you're giving an injection, you'll be using a needle and a syringe. This one has a lure tip. There's also lure lock syringes out there, which are just slightly different. Now if you're drawing blood, a lot of times, you'll be using the vacutainer system. The vacutainers are, are just what the name sort of implies. They're tubes that have a vacuum inside them, so they will actually draw the blood themselves. And you'll see there are different colored top tubes, and what this relates to is the kind of anticoagulant that's inside the tube. The needle that you use with the vacutainer system is a double-ended needle. This end goes down into the tube, this end is going to go into the blood vessel. As you'll see, this end of the needle, the tube end of the needle, has a little rubber guard on it. I'm going to pull it off for demonstration purposes so you can see. And it is. It's, it's just a needle like any other needle. Many practitioners, and most MDs, like to use a stabilizer for their vacutainer needle. And what that means is that you can place your tube inside the stabilizer and once you've put the needle into the vein, I'll have to put the needle onto my stabilizer. You can screw it on right like this, like that. You place the needle into the vein, like this. Tube fits right up in. You push the tube onto that needle in there and everything's nicely stabilized. Now, not all large animal practitioners use stabilizers, but, but you it depends on what you're comfortable with, and, and certainly you can do it either way. So now let's take this equipment and we'll go outside and demonstrate on red. Now that we've shown you the equipment, let's show you how to locate the jugular vein. We chose reds here today because he has great veins and they're real easy to visualize. So we've clipped this side of red's neck because it's winter and he's got a thick winter coat. Jugular veins located in the jugular groove running down here on sort of the bottom third of the neck. And and it's almost always in this groove. I'm going to hold it off here, and I want you to take a look and see how the blood fills the vein coming up from the bottom. I'm bouncing a little bit with my finger to make it just a little bit more visual. Now I'll let go and see how it goes away, and I'll pull it back up again for you. And this just about where, where I have clipped here, is where you're going to be putting the needle in either to draw blood or to give an IV injection. Right here, middle third of the neck, after you clearly see the vein. He does have great veins, doesn't he? He's got great veins. <laughs> yeah. So let's show him uh, the unclip side where he's, uh, it's gonna be a little harder to see that. Yeah. And in reality on a patient, that's, that's the side right. you're gonna be sticking. True. We've moved old reds around so that you can see the unclipped side of him so we can see the jugular here. Now because he has a nice thick winter coat, we've gone ahead and put a little alcohol on his neck so that when the vein pops up, you can see it a little bit better. Now I'm holding it off and you can see it coming up. See the little wave as I bounce my finger on it? I'll let it go. Down it goes. Pull it back up again. Now Red has really nice veins. You can really see them quite well. One of the tricks in practice is to never panic. Just, just wait because the blood will fill the vein and you will get a good view and it's Better to wait and stick where you're sure you're sticking than to just willy-nilly stick a needle into them. They start to resent that. Right, I think that's one of the uh, problems that sort of a neophyte has. They, they don't see it right away and then they change the location and they don't, they don't wait long enough to see it. They change location again and so they just get uh, a, a warped picture, so to yeah. speak. It's good to be patient in this. Dr. Hamill's going to show us two different ways to draw blood from a horse, but before we get started, I'd like to just spend a moment and talk about restraint and safety. Uh, one of the good reasons why we chose Reds here for this is that we know that Reds is basically a really good guy and he's not likely to misbehave. If I was working on a client horse, though, I wouldn't be standing here directly in front of him. Um, since we're making a movie, I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see real well, but if I was with a client horse, I'd be standing here so that I'm less likely to get hit by a front leg coming up, and I'm less likely to take his head in my face. <laughs> and I still have room to work here. Okay, off we go. Right. Now, I'm going to take blood with a vacutainer uh, system here to start with. So as we showed you before, you're going to put the 
hold her onto the needle, screw the screw it on tight like so. And this is designed, of course, that it's going to take the the uh, tube in like that. It just fits it nicely. All right. I will build his juggler vein up. You see it real well. Yep. Yeah, we can see it. I like to, to have my needle with a bevel toward me. And it's good man. And you can see the blood filling that tube. And when you go to take it out, it's good. Yep, there you go. Mm -hmm. My job from a restraint point of view at this point, of course, is to try and persuade Red to stay still. Now, obviously, Red, again, is a real pro, so he stays, he stands yeah. here pretty nicely for this. But your client horses may not do it quite so well. That's right. You need to be prepared that they're going to move and where you're going to move if they move and things like that. I'm going to show you the, just the syringe and needle technique. And a lot of times, you know, when we have a horse that is moving around a lot, uh, it's actually easier to take it with a syringe and needle than it is to try to manipulate your vacutainer and not use the, lose the vacuums and so on. So a lot of times we'll, we'll just use a needle and syringe. Now, Dr. Hamill, you like to draw blood with the needle on the syringe? Yeah, actually I do. If I'm drawing blood, if I in, I'm injecting, I'll take it off. But I will draw blood with the with the needle on the syringe. Mm -hmm. You like to do it? Either way, but I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's just a stylistic difference. Yeah. There's really no difference to it. You, but you will see people doing it different ways. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get the jugular to distend there. Well, I usually try to have the syringe and needle braced somehow. You see I'm bracing it against my thumb there. I'm still maintaining some pressure on that juggler with my thumb when I'm done. Okay, what a good guy. He is. Dr. Hamill, so when you're hitting the jugular vein to either draw blood or to uh, put an injection in, what do you want to miss? That's a good point. You need to realize that they're in this juggler groove, as we call it, Besides the jugular vein, we have the carotid artery that's behind the jugular vein here. And there is a muscle belly that goes between the two. But this can be a little variable. And this is very important that we miss that. Um, most of our drugs are designed to go intravenously and not in the artery. So that's where the crux is. Uh, also, you have some nerves, that, the trunks that run down this area that you don't want to hit. We try to be as careful as clean uh, with this area because if we get inflammatory responses there, infections, that can be some big time things. Sure, sure. I mean, the complications that come with uh, either drawing blood or injecting, you know, would include things like uh, getting a hematoma. Uh, not all that common when you're drawing blood because we're using a pretty small needle. Mm -hmm. but certainly a possibility where you have leakage of blood out of the site. That's right, and that's one of the reasons we use a small needle if we can, as small a needle as we, as we can uh, comfortably use. Um, Sometimes we have situations where the horses are profoundly ill and the trauma that we can do just by putting a, a needle into the, the vessel can cause some reactions uh, throughout the body that we don't like, some clotting reactions. Uh, that we'd rather not see, but this isn't something because anyone's done anything wrong. It's just the profound illness that the animal's experiencing. Lots and lots of people inject veins and draw blood out of the jugular vein for years and years and years without seeing a complication, but we'd be remiss if we didn't That's discuss right. it. There are complications, and you, you, we need to just be always careful about those. Now we'd like to show a low volume intravenous injection. We've moved reds around to his clip side so you can see real well. Wiping it off with an alcohol wipe. Now I like to put my needle in not attached to my syringe. I guess I better take the hub out of my mouth. That's an old practitioner habit. Bad old practitioner. Bad habit. 
Now, you can see that vein real well there where I've popped it up. And I'm going to pop right into the vein, and you can see the flashback. I'm going to attach my needle to my syringe. I'm going to flash back into my syringe. Now, I like to do that kind of multiple times. I like to really see where I am while I'm doing this. Now, my rule is that every time that horse moves, mm -hmm. I need to flash back. Mm -hmm. There you go. All done. Yeah. Nice fine gauge needle, so I'm not all that concerned about a hematoma. We were using a 22 gauge needle there. Okay, Dr. Forney, you showed us that with doing the injection, it's important to take that needle off the syringe. So, why and what would, how do you, uh, what do you see if you're sure. not in the right place? Sure. Well, the reason why I take the needle off the syringe is I want to be sure I'm in the jugular. As you know, the carotid runs deep to the jugular here in the jugular group. It's behind it, deep inside the horse. So if I got unlucky and I actually stuck my needle all the way through the jugular and I ended up in the carotid, of course, arteries are different than veins. And I'll get that rhythmic spurt, 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 spurt. And it will give me a clue that I've, you know, that I've made a mistake and I need to back out and put myself back into the jugular vein. Right. And, you know, people talk about, well, arterial blood is redder than venous blood. And I don't... And that's a little bit hard for me to say. And a lot of times we can't, our lighting's so poor, we can't be sure anyway. But you really want to look. You saw the blood came very slowly out of that needle. And if you were into an artery, it would be, be coming fast. That's right. It squirts you in the eye, yeah. hopefully not. Right.